but I can actually have a fairly positive impact on people's lives by staying just, be, just behind the curtain, essentially, at the lab bench. Research, the insatiable quest for knowledge. ARVC, or arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, is number one, a mouthful. But number two, what it is, it's a genetic disease that affects the uh, electrical rhythm through heart muscle. And ARVC in this province is a genetic disease that's inherited in families. One of the moments for our lab, I think, that really helped us be eventually successful with finding this gene was when we had uh, Corey Winter and his family who are affected, Corey has ARVC. Uh, him and his wife come in, sit down with the students, sit down with my staff, and talk to us one-on-one -on -one about what it's like for them to live with such uh, an awful genetic disease. That interaction with Corey and his family uh, and the folks who were actually looking at their DNA trying to find the gene was a turning point for my lab. I think it was on that day that the students really could see what it was they were doing, why it was important, and once Corey and his family were gone, the next day, it was a different atmosphere in the lab. I think everybody finally got it. You just can't do enough as a researcher. Uh, it kills me that we don't know more about it and that we don't have the cure yet. But that helps drive you towards working harder and harder to try to figure it out. You're probably familiar with hepatitis C virus infection, hep C. Unfortunately, even more dangerous is hepatitis B. Hep B kills about one million people per year. Malaria only kills more. And the virus does not grow as we are calling in the cultures, in the, in the dish. So having an animal model is very, very important. And the woodchuck model became in last few years, to, to some degree because of studies in my laboratory, like golden standard for testing of antiviral agents against humans. We found that uh, not only the liver is infected, but also immune system is infected, lymphocytes, like HIV, hepatocytes, which are liver cells, which are sitting in one place, because these others are moving, they can also kill other cells. It is, you can do this in a mice, you can do this in the human, you can do this anywhere, but uh, this was other way of thinking about the issues which we apply and we were very successful. So we have this concept in ecology called keystone species and the idea there is like a keystone in an arch. If you remove the wrong brick from an arch it collapses, that's the keystone. And we know in some ecosystems that if you remove the wrong species the whole thing goes crazy and, and collapses. And so when you have all these different species in the ocean, you worry about which ones could be keystones uh, and what sort of effect is it going to have if you remove those species. There is a large 10-year project uh, started in the year 2000 and will finish in 2010 called the Census of Marine Life. And the idea of this project is to try and improve on our understanding of life in the oceans, particularly the biodiversity of life in the oceans. And one of the things that's come out during the last 10 years, for example, is that even in a liter of seawater, you can get hundreds and hundreds of different types of microbes. Some of these species have very unique characteristics, unique compounds, unique enzymes, and medicine has been taking these compounds and using them for applications uh, in biopharmaceuticals. And so then the question is, if you start wiping out species that you've never seen, what sort of genetic potential do they have to contribute to future health products, um, a, a cure for cancer, who knows? Anything is possible. Memorial University's Office of Research, world-changing research.